Hello again, brothers and sisters in Christ. I did make it back this evening. It's late, Saturday, February the 8th, and it's 8.38 p.m. I was having a little internet trouble earlier, and I couldn't figure out what in the world. I got a blessing. They charged me $49.99 to move from two floors down up to here for my internet. They wouldn't let me just unscrew it and unplug the one thing, plug it in and screw it back in and then do something on the phone. And anyway, I got the bill today and it was like fixing to come out of my account on the 10th and I called and I was like, I can't pay this all. I said, I already planned. I already subtracted the $49.99 for my bill. And I had planned to pay the rest at the end of the month. Well, <laughs> the first guy gave me over to another guy. And he tried to stop it from going through. Because apparently it had already been in the process of going through I'm making a point here and I said my friend was here and she said ask to speak to the supervisor I, so I said okay. I said I want to speak to your supervisor <laughs> and I got an American woman <laughs> you know what I'm talking about I, many times you call these places and you get these uh, guys from India, uh, somewhere, you can hardly understand them. Well, anyway, I got this woman that sounded American, and I explained to her, I said, I have every intention of paying it, but I said, I can't right now. I said, that's grocery money. <laughs> and I told her, I said, I've already subtracted the forty nine ninety nine. I said, I have to pay the rest at the end of the month. Well, anyway, she, she said, um, oh, let me see what I can do here. And she puts me on hold. She comes back. She, it, long story short, it costed me $9.99. <laughs> I saved $40. Praise the Lord. <laughs> My friend showing up and saying, to ask them to see your, uh, that you want to speak to the supervisor. You know, and I have done that before in the past. Where I've had to ask for the supervisor to get anywhere, you know. But anyway, that's my little uh, extra blessing that I got today. I just want to share that. And what, what I have to share now is a request, actually, from one of you um, who had written me an email about this subject. And said that uh, apparently he had written to a few other channels and just suggested to us that we should do a video on this because he realizes how very important it is in our walk with Christ. And I agreed to do it. So it is about... Dum, dum, da, dum, drum roll idolatry how many people do you think might possibly be guilty of idolatry I'm sure everybody realizes what it means you can just cut the word in half and see the word idol and realize what it is so I got to thinking all right, all right, what's the best way for me to go about this? And I started thinking of, well, I could get into the history of it and what other cultures idolized and how it came to be that we now have trouble with this. And I thought, what is the point? The only one I want to talk about is Adam and Eve. Why them? Well, everything started with Adam and Eve, and I don't believe for a minute that God created them one day. They walked with God in the cool of the evening. In other words, 
they loved him, he loved them, and they had a relationship. How could Satan so easily beguile Eve into eating from the fruit of that tree? The tree of knowledge of good and evil. I surmise or propose to you that maybe, just maybe, because they were told, do not eat of the fruit of this tree. Of all the trees in this garden you may eat, but not from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. I am sorry about the light. There's no overhead light, and I'm going to get a lamp up here eventually. Okay, it'll be better. All right, so I'm sitting kind of crookedy to try to get this light. Let me try this. Maybe that'll help. Okay. I think they wondered, why do you suppose we can't eat from that tree? Well, I don't know, but we just can't. Yeah, you're right. We can't. We can't. How often is something forbidden to a child the very thing they just have to touch it? How many times have you seen people walk by a sign that says wet paint and they have to touch the wall to see if it's really wet? Man is a funny creature. It starts from childhood. You tell somebody, no, you can't have that. And that's what they want. And if you dwell on it too long, you start to think more of it than you should. Okay. I'm only suggesting that because I don't believe for a minute that Satan just came in here one day and said, Did God really say you couldn't eat from that tree? That's right. He said we couldn't. Don't you think they would, if it had been just a couple weeks, that they would have said that? I just think they probably looked upon that tree and it was built up in their minds to the point where they nearly idolized it. That is such an amazing tree that we're not even allowed to eat the fruit of it. It's just a thought. And then we know about all the paganism through the years, like with the Easter thing and the Ishtar and the they used uh, the egg was a real huge symbol and all the gods that each succeeding, shall we say, government rule worshipped. Okay, I pulled up the meaning of the word idolatry. We all know it, but the worship... It means the worship of idols, but that's not entirely correct. Okay, similar is idol worship, idolatrism. Now that I've never heard. Fetishism, having a fetish, that's an extreme desire for it. Icon worship. Okay, goes on to say extreme admiration, love, or reverence for something or someone. Now they put a sentence here to give you an idea. We must not allow our idolatry of art 
to obscure issues of political significance. Okay, of all the sentences they could have used. So, other similar words are adulation. I don't even know what that means. Adoration, adoring, reverence, glorification. Perhaps they glorified that tree. I Okay, this looks like lionizing. Lionization, like the animal, a lion. Izing, lionizing. Lionization, huh, never heard of it. Love, admiration, loving, admiring. Hero worshiping. Oh my goodness, how many young people have hero worship? Even in a good Christian home, if your kids are going to public school and all the girls are talking about Justin Bieber, He's the only name that came to mind. And they all have posters of him. And they all love his songs, or a lot of them. Your kids, if your kid is going to school with their kids, those kids, they probably come home asking you, Oh, Mom, can I get that? Whatever. What will you tell them? Okay. So, we get it about idolatry. Putting anything. I don't care if it is a singer. If it is a tree. If it is a statue. If it is a art. Anything you adore, worship, want to do more than be with God or you love more than God or you want to spend time with more than God it becomes an idol which is idolatry which is one of the sins God hates think of the Ten Commandments the Ten Commandments given to Moses was, I am the Lord thy God, thou shalt not have strange gods before me. Then he goes on to add, Thou shalt not make for yourselves any kind of image of anything of above or below in other words, birds, fish, trees, people, flowers, images, carved out images that you put on a pedestal and worship to bow down to it. Okay, I want to pull that up. All right. I want to make sure um, Ten Commandments idolatry. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity. Okay, and it quits. And it doesn't even say where it is. All right. Wow. Okay. Now it goes into Wikipedia. I want to know the verse so I can just go to... I know it's in Leviticus, right? 
or is it in Exodus? Oh, come on. All right, let's try something else. Thou shalt not make unto here. Let's try this. Exodus 20, verse 4. All right, so I'm going to go to Blue Letter Bible and type in Exodus 20, verse 4, although I really want above and below it. Okay, so I'm going to back up. Okay. I am, verse 2 starts with, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Okay, now when Jesus died, he did fulfill the laws of the Old Testament. I, I contend that when he said, it is finished. The laws he gave were finished. Why else would, why would he expect us to no longer have animal sacrifices. We could no longer write our wives a writ a divorce. Jesus said a man should be married to one woman and if you even lust after another one, you've committed adultery in your heart. If you even hate somebody, you've committed murder in your heart. He taught us a better way. And nobody gets stoned for not keeping the Sabbath anymore. That's murder. That's killing people. You see, he had to make it like he did in the Old Testament because they had to be stripped. Okay. They still were, I mean... When Jesus gave those two commandments, love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength, and love thy neighbor as thyself. On these fall all the laws and the prophets. Okay. I want to move on to more modern things from, from this um, church age. All right. Actually, started with the Catholic Church, but not right away. I'm not sure, and I didn't look it up. What year they started making statues, crosses with Jesus hanging on them. Of course, we do use crosses in Christianity. Um, I think as long as you're not treating like my necklace, okay, like I said before, I want to wear a cross so that when I'm raptured 
and someone finds my pile of clothes on the floor, if, if that's how it happens, they'll see this with it. Now, I realize some people don't want to wear them anymore because non-Christians have pretty much blasphemed wearing crosses by making big old gaudy hunks of jewelry out of them. They don't no more love Jesus and the man in the moon, and they wear them for whatever reason, and especially out of gold, and that's just wrong because people worship jewelry like they're really you know they're hot stuff because theirs is 24 karat gold you get what I'm saying so it isn't just an object it's what it's made of and it doesn't stand for I love the Lord you know what I mean anyway moving on I got to thinking about other pagan things that we call pagan or heathen might be a better word. And, I, and when I was outside walking my dog earlier and I thought, Lord, give me what's a good idea of a modern thing that wasn't around before. And Santa Claus came to my mind. Now, a whole lot of people... Christians still play the Santa Claus thing with their kids. Or maybe they don't. Maybe they don't lie to their kids and say there is one, but they'll hang them stockings and put things in them and maybe have little Santa Clauses hanging on the tree or a statue of one sitting over in the corner by the fireplace or a big old picture one stuck on the window or whatever. And I got to thinking, okay, if they don't worship it, is that wrong? To me it is. And here's why. It's showing that you don't care You don't care that that thing is a, a lying myth, that it represents lies that have been told, that the attributes of God has been given to Satan, that he knows when you're sleeping, he knows when you're awake, he knows when you're good or bad, so be good for goodness sake. You see, would anybody... Any of you that see this, would you put a picture of Buddha on your wall? One time my daughter asked me to make curtains for my grandson who was having a, uh, this has been several years ago, he was maybe 13 and she was redoing his room for him. And I was looking for curtain material with the Asian theme because he developed a love for the Japanese people. I don't know why. Uh, there wasn't Japanese people at their church, so I really don't know what it, that was about, but it was, you know, we didn't discourage it or anything. I found this material and it had dragons on it. And I thought, well, that's certainly Oriental, but then I thought, who is the dragon? To me, dragons represent Satan. As we see it in the Bible in the book of Revelation, he is the dragon. The dragon. You know what I mean? So I said to Lori, I said, you know, uh, I found this really nice red material with black dragons they had black outline but still they were red I said they'd be perfect except they're dragons and she agreed no let's not get that so I made them plain red to go with some of the other things okay so the point is I wouldn't hang a Buddha I wouldn't use a dragon 
I wouldn't use any object, even though it was just an outline of a dragon, several of them on curtains. It's a dragon, man. Okay, so let me get, wrap this up. I didn't mean for it to be so long. The young man who was concerned about Christians needing to know about idolatry was concerned he'd been shown he was spending too much time on his phone now many of us could be guilty of that now I asked him I said well are you doing things besides just learning through good videos when you're on your phone? For instance, are you playing games? Especially those that have evil elements. Are you watching videos of a nature that is not good for you? Are you on Facebook? Just chatting, playing games with other people, which a little bit of that, if it's a good game, like that word game I play with my friends, it's like Scrabble, Words with Friends. I started that with some of you and a, another friend of mine, and I don't get on Facebook very often, but when I do, I try to, you know, play my turn and catch that up but I'm on there maybe an hour a week to be honest maybe two so I certainly don't idolize Facebook I do not idolize any kind of social media but you can it's up to each individual person to take it to the Lord Or have you been convicted already? What about television? How many hours versus time in your word, time listening to some good gospel music or the praise and worship, you know, that you sing along and praise the Lord. How much time talking to the Lord and looking at good YouTube videos that teach you, you believe, and believe me, I know there are some that can mislead you that you need to take to prayer and say, Lord, show me in the word if what this person's teaching is correct you you jot down the parts that you're not sure of google some of the phrases and see what you find in the bible there's lots of ways to do research using a word using a phrase um especially if you're looking for a scripture to back it up you may have to pray on it Okay, so in this particular young man's case, it was his phone. But so many people are addicted to their computer to the point where they can't put it down. And I have found from making this move... And being sick and not having it on all the time. I would say my prayers in the morning. Talk to the Lord while I'm having my coffee. And after taking the dog out, first thing I did, I opened up my computer, read my email, answered all I could. And I might get some things to share. I might not 
I might, um, well, I found I was not in the Word enough. I have got to get into the Word more. And I found myself when I was really sick, and all I could do to keep from coughing was lay in bed and listen to my music. And that was so wonderful. It, it was like, you know, I hated that I had to get sick to, to get that lesson. But we need that. We need a rounded, just like your meals. You can't have all. I know there's a diet where you eat all meat for a while. And you can lose a lot of weight, but it can also make you ketoacidotic. Give you ketoacidosis. You can look that up. You have too many ketones in your urine, and it gets into your bloodstream, and it can make you very sick. So you're only supposed to do it for one month on, one month off, and one month on, or... or you add, you start adding, like salads, a little baked potato, maybe a half a roll. You start adding the other stuff, cutting back on the size of the meat, stuff like that. There's ways to do it. There's doctors that watch your ketones and all that. But anyway, how did I get off on that? Um... I don't even know how I got off on that. Anyway, um, my point was that, that there are many things that we can still get off on. Food can be an idol. If you crave it, you got to have it. You can't stop having something in your mouth. That's a problem, even if you're not all that big. So, if you have anything in your life that you might consider loving a bit too much, and you would say you'd rather stay here and have that than to go to heaven, what could that be? It could be your spouse and your children. It could be your house. It could be your career. Think about it. And ask yourself. And take it to the Lord. If you even wonder. Would I rather stay here? To have? these people in my life to have this thing in my life do I love this thing or these people or whatever more than I love being with the Lord praying to him for others or just to worship him you see that's the point he hates idolatry he demands being first first last and in between he doesn't expect your whole day, but he expects him, you to have him on your mind enough to where if any problem pops up, you go to him first. And then take his guidance to, okay, I've got to call the car dealership. Okay, I've got to call the doctor. Okay, I've got to get some help with this. Do you see what I'm saying? Take it to him first. And 
this light is so crazy, isn't it? It's weird. Anyway, I want to um, wrap this up by saying, Love the Lord thy God with all your heart, mind, soul, and with all your strength. And for heaven's sakes, love your neighbor as yourself. You want forgiven? Forgive others. You want help in your time of need? Help others. Love them. Love the unlovable as hard as it can be. Let us love one another. And always... <laughs> talk to others the way you want to be talked to. All right, I'm going to end this here. And I, I did pray for God to help me with this. I've been talking to him about it all day. I, I just didn't want to throw a lot of research at you. I wanted this to come from my heart and from God helping me talk. <laughs> So I pray that I have said what he would have had me to say and that I didn't get too much off subject. So I'm going to plead the blood of Jesus over this and please ask me any questions you want and if I need to, I'll look them up, okay? <laughs> but also, start learning to use your search engines to look things up. So that you can find scriptures to back things up and to answer your questions. Okay, so I'll plead the blood of Jesus over this video, the internet connection, over my computer, over each and every one of you, your devices, and all your internet connections. And with that, I'll say bye for now. I'll talk to you later. But probably not today. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye for now. God bless each and every one of you. I can't wait to meet you up in heaven. And we're all going to have a great big hug fest after I meet the Lord. Bye for now.